Good morning and thank you for attending police headquarters. My name is Constable Carolyn DeClute and I'm here today to introduce Inspector Dominic Sinopoli of Sex Crimes. He will be providing you with an update on the investigation into allegations of assault and sexual assault at St. Mike's College School. Inspector? Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are here today to give you an update regarding the uh, investigation surrounding St. Mike's College. We appreciate that this investigation and the uh, associated uh, press coverage has been trying on the students, parents, and faculty of St. Mike's College. We would like to thank all the students, parents, and faculty who participated in the investigation. We would like to thank Karen Kennedy and the partner agencies at Booth CYAC, including the SCAN program at Sick Children's Hospital for their assistance in providing treatment, advocacy, and emotional support to the victims. And there are three aspects to this uh, investigation that I will discuss with you here today. To begin with, I will talk about the occurrences. From start to finish, we have investigated eight different occurrences. Some of these occurrences were obviously criminal, while others required further investigation. Of the eight occurrences, we are proceeding on criminal charges in relation to three of them. You already know about the one where on Monday, November 19th of this year, six young persons from the school were arrested and charged with assault, sexual assault with a weapon, and gang sexual assault. On today's date, five young persons turned themselves into police and have been charged with assault, sexual assault with a weapon, and gang sexual assault. This is in relation to an incident that occurred on October 17th of this year. Four of these young persons that were arrested today were also implicated in the original arrest of November 19th. Two of these five young persons from today's arrest are also charged with assault and assault with a weapon in relation to an incident that occurred on September 18th of this year. Both of these young persons were also implicated in the original arrest of November 19th. The young persons will be appearing today in court at 311 Jarvis. The remaining five occurrences are being concluded either because there was no criminal allegation or the complainants did not want to participate in the investigation. The breakdown of the occurrences and their results have been released in today's press release. I can tell you that investigators identified approximately 80 witnesses and conducted approximately 60 interviews. There are no interviews outstanding. With regards to the filming and or the publishing of the video, I can tell you that we are still actively investigating the fact that the original sexual assault was both videotaped and subsequently distributed. I can further advise you that despite the various warnings, we have credible evidence to suggest that people are still in possession of this video and or have made attempts to upload it on social media. As I have stated, the video and its distribution is a constant reminder to victims of the trauma they have endured. In many ways, this could be far more detrimental than the assault itself. We will be relentless in this regard. Altering or cropping the video does not change the digital identifiers of the video. You will be caught and you will be charged. With respect to the duty to report, as we had initially stated, part of our investigation will look at the reporting of the incident. I can advise you that after a thorough investigation, we do not believe we have grounds to lay any charges against the principal, Mr. Greg Reeves, in relation to his duty to report under the Child, Youth and Family Services Act. The same would apply to the faculty and or any of the coaching staff. We have consulted with the Assistant Crown Attorneys at the Ministry of the Attorney General who have confirmed that no charges are warranted. In closing, we do not have any evidence or complaints to suggest that this type of behavior extended outside of this school year 
or involved anyone outside of this small group of students. Additionally, our research into these incidents and our past dealings with the college did not suggest any trend that would lead someone to believe that this is an ongoing or systemic problem. Since the reporting of these incidents and the unprecedented media attention, we have not received any reports of historical physical or sexual abuse. I want to thank Detective Sergeant Greg Payne and his team at Boost CYAC for their hard work. These officers worked countless hours to bring some closure to the victims of these incidents and to the parents, students, and faculty of St. Michael's College who have been affected by the actions of a few students. I think that this particular case has brought much needed attention to this type of behavior. Physical and sexual abuse cannot be tolerated anywhere, let alone in schools where children should feel safe. Parents, students, and teachers are all talking about this and of what is expected of them. And that is a good thing. I want to close with a sense of optimism. This matter only came to our, our attention because of a young boy who had seen the video on social media and alerted his principal. This all started with him, and I want to end with him by saying, young man, you should be very proud of yourself. I'll take questions. Talk to victims. Um, you say that there's two sexual assaults before the courts right now. Are they two different victims? Yes. Two different victims. Um, and the, the, there's one new student who's been arrested in, I guess, incident number eight. Correct. Correct. So there's a seventh student arrested. Was that student expelled, or was this student uh, still attending school uh, since, I guess, we learned of all this back in November? I, I don't know whether that student has been expelled, but I suspect that if he wasn't, um, he will be shortly. No, I'm just wondering if he was amongst the group of eight students, seven or eight students, that, that was expelled initially by the principal when this, uh, when this all kind of broke, or if he had been like, attending classes the whole time. I, I don't know. I don't have that answer for you. Does the second sexual assault also be saved? Um, sorry. Um, which section sexual assault are you talking about? Sexual assault that's resulted in charges. So number eight. You're talking about incident, incident number, number eight? eight yeah. um, we have information that it may have been videotaped, but we don't necessarily have that video right now. Is the nature of that video similar to incident one? Yes. Is it, uh, and it's a different victim, correct? Correct. Do you know, uh, do we have an age of the victim? Uh, I don't. Did, did, did number eight also happen in the locker room? I believe so, yes. Does it also involve uh, real estate? I'm not going to comment on what the object is. So now, now, that there's, now that there's two incidents, two separate incidents involving four of the five state students, are you concerned or do you believe that there could be other incidents that you have to look into or, or that may come to play? That may come to play. Well, I can tell you that we, we have investigated eight. I mean, I, I can't predict what may come in the future. As it stands right now, we don't have any information to suggest that there's um, any other incidents outside of what we currently have, and none have been reported to us. When, were, when was police uh, notified of this second incident, and did the school or the principal know of that second incident uh, before you guys did? I, d I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. All the incidents involve members of the football team. Correct. Can you comment on the length of time between uh, the two incidents of when they're alleged to have occurred? Did they happen the same day? Did they happen a week apart, a month apart? Uh, the original incident from November 19th arrest occurred on November 7th. Um, the incidents that the boys are charged with today, the assault with a weapon occurred on September 18th, and the um, sexual assault that the boys were charged with today occurred on October 17th, all of this year. Why do these incidents have been closed? You mentioned that some of them are because the victims did not want to go forward with it. Can you talk about uh, the willingness of some of these kids to speak up, to come forward, especially after what they saw around the school, the reaction of the parents was very public in terms of not believing what was going on. Can you speak about that? Um, 
I, I'm not really sure I understand your question, but... Um, I'm just not willing to go forward because do you think because of the reaction to this case, because it was very public, because there was a lot of people saying, you know... I, I, I couldn't answer that for you. I have no idea why they did or did not want to proceed. It is their right to uh, decline to be interviewed, so uh, we have to respect their right. Of the six boys that were uh, making a court appearance today, uh, four of them were held back. Is it safe to say that they, were they facing these charges? Is that why they didn't make a court appearance? Yes, four of the five today are in relation to the original six, and the fifth uh, today was an additional student. Okay, sorry, Brad, it's a tough question, but describing eight incidents, three of which are going to go before the courts, but there were eight. All the children have been charged with before the courts, no adults. Correct. Not one accident, not two, isolated eight. That's a lot of incidents of sexual assault in one setting. And I, the question to you is, are you, are you clearing every adult, every coach, every teacher, everybody that no one knew about all eight of these incidents? Or is the investigation still open and there could be an adult that you know, may have been in charge of this locker room or wherever it was? So, just to clarify, of the eight occurrences, not all eight were sexually motivated or sexually related. Um, as it stands right now, we have no information to suggest that any of the teachers, any of the coaching staffs were aware of any of these occurrences. So as it stands right now, unless something comes to us in the future, there will be no charges in relation to the I adults. A follow up about that. So since there were no adults involved in this, in the eight incidents, it's not all sexual assault, but all serious enough for you to investigate. Uh, was there, is there one particular gang leader or somebody that is sort of leading this or is it and that's a tricky question too, but is it all, all these kids together deciding this or is there one person that's sort of... Uh, let me cut you off there. I, I don't have that answer for you and I don't know whether there is an answer for that. Have you ever seen that. it before? Have I ever seen this before? Like this type of behavior? Well, this is not, this is a, you know, obviously this was going on there eight times in some form or another, not just once or twice. Correct, but... I, I, um, we, we should not we should not lead to the conclusion that all eight of those incidents involve the one junior football team. We're just telling you that we received um, uh, information with regards to eight occurrences involving St. Mike's College, not necessarily all affiliated to the same uh, group of boys. So but the two are. Sorry, let me just finish this. Go ahead. It's so, uh, so complicated. Um, so the eight. The, were not all with this particular group then. Just the, the ones that you charged with the three with the football team, the other ones are part of other teams or other things. I, I don't, don't have any information that they're part of any other teams. I just can tell you that they are students at St. Mike's, both complaining and suspect, um, but we don't either have a criminal allegation. Um, as you can appreciate, even some of the videos that we may have got at the beginning, um, it, it's hard to gauge whether they are or not criminal until we speak to the individuals. And if the individuals um, speak to us and clarify that it was non-criminal, then we close the investigation. Have students at any other schools come forward since this became public? Have you opened any investigations into any other behavior like this at other schools? Not this type of behavior, no. You said that there's evidence that a video is still being trying to be uploaded or shared on social media. Are you talking about the first incident? or the eighth incident where you believe there's a video also. No, I'm talking about the first incident. In relation to incident number eight, you mentioned that there's another video. Uh, are the individuals in that video the ones that are, uh, the only individuals, are, are they the ones being charged? Are there other witnesses or kind of spectators that are in that video as well, or is it just the individuals who are being charged? So just to clarify, I don't know that there actually is another video in relation to incident number eight. We have information that the incident was videotaped, but I have not seen okay. that video. Do you think it's quite remarkable that this all happened in such a short span of time this year, but there's no reason to believe that this is systemic or there's no historical events like this occurring? So what, what I guess, what, what would have, I know you can't probably answer this, but what would have sparked this to all of a sudden we start happening this year? I, I can't answer that. I have no idea. Have the police been contacted by any other schools or students in investigating other incidents at other schools uh, that 
now that this has come to light, maybe some other uh, individuals might feel confident to come to police now? Uh, again, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure that uh, students probably do feel more comfortable coming forward, but I don't know whether any of them have and or whether or not any of it. I can tell you that we don't have any other investigations that um, arise from the same set of circumstances. How are the two victims being, um, I guess, taken care of? Are they still in school? What kind of services are being offered to them? Um, the services that are being offered to them are done through Boost CYAC. Um, they get both um, uh, physical um, or uh, treatment, physical treatment, as well as emotional uh, support, and they have an advocate assigned to them. Are any of the accused also victims? Uh, I'm not ready to answer that question. You mentioned the young man that phoned in. Right? Uh, took that to mean something not related to the same way he saw it and told his principal about it. Right? Yes. Is there some sort of a, an award or something that a young person could get? Because obviously this was a crisis there and this is, this is the turning point that, that happened. Um, there is a community award. Uh, we will consider that. Um, but at this point in time, we're just going to wait and see how things play out in court. Um, <laughs> just go back to the earlier question. Sorry, I just, go ahead. Absolutely. I think we're missing the mark on that very issue. Um, the filming and publishing of these videos, um, I, I, I can't state how important it is um, that students understand that is not acceptable behavior and does delve into criminal territory. I, I don't know how to answer that question for you. I don't know. Just to go back to the question earlier, about the incident and the possibility of a video, is your belief that the four or five, the five uh, boys that were charged here were the only ones present in the room under the victim, or do you believe that there may have been more people who were just onlookers, witnesses, happily around? I don't have an answer to that. I don't know. Take one more question. It, it is more true. These five cases that are dropped, you mentioned that it could be because there wasn't enough evidence that it was criminal. It could be that it's because um, the victims forward. didn't want to come forward. So, I mean, what should we take from that? Like, did this actually happen? Is this, are these crimes, some of them? Some of them, yes. Some of them, no. Because at the end of the day, like I said to you, what we have is, like in, in one instance, a short one-second video, and it's very difficult to decipher whether or not it is a criminal act um, or whether it was in some form or fashion consensual. You should probably not take too much away from the fact that, uh, and I'm going to use the word um, that you said, dropped. We have not dropped anything. We have concluded our investigation as it relates to these five occurrences, but if in the future someone comes forward with new information uh, or if the complainant comes forward um, and wants to proceed, uh, we will reopen it and in revisit. To this uh, October 17th uh, alleged assault, um, did, you, did, they, did the victim come forward? Was it their families? What took so long and when it comes to this particular investigation? Did, did, were you notified before the initial uh, incident number one, or did you find out about October 17th after this whole investigation started? We found out about October 17th incident after the investigation commenced. Thanks, everybody else. Stay behind. If anybody needs to walk through the police for Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much.